Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. With John Coleman and I are speaking with Dr. Liz Lister. Dr. Liz, great to Howdy. see you again. Likewise, uh, thank you. I I love, I just, I don't know why I'm addicted to infomercials on the computer, on television, and I mm. sit through these things. I d don't ask me why, but I do. Okay. I, I always regret it. But I saw one recently for a supplement uh. that was supposedly new stuff. And what I got out of it was that if you buy this supplement from this guy, uh, it's got all this stuff in it. It's great for your gut. And you got to get your gut organized. But the, yes. the one element that came out of it, and I wanted to ask you about this, is butyrate. Is butyrate a real thing? I mean, is it just something he named yeah. or... Is this a real sup a, a real, you know, element in in food and and chemicals? Yes, yes, it is. It okay. is. Okay. And and does All it right. actually help so, the gut? Okay. The answer is yes. However, when I say more, and ex we'll we'll explain for you and also for our listeners what exactly how is it normally made because our bodies are able to make butyrate. OK, uh -huh. so that means that we don't necessarily need to have it added as a supplement. That's what that means. Ah, uh, OK. OK. So butyrate is a short chain fatty acid. OK, so fatty acid, right? We've got carbs, fats, proteins. This is a fat. OK, it's a fatty acid and it is made in the colon. OK, the large intestine. It's made by the, what we call the good bacteria that live in the colon. What happens is when we eat food, especially fiber, the bacteria in the colon take the fiber, they digest it, and then they make butyrate. Okay. Okay, it is a product. And butyrate, in turn, is an energy source for the bacteria. Okay. So we get energy from all these different, right? Fats, proteins, carbs. We get energy from those in different forms. And so butyrate as a fatty acid is a form of energy for those bacteria. Right. So it's a good, it's basically a good thing. It is a good thing. It is and a good thing. And we make it naturally. Correct. When assuming, we eat the right foods. Sure. Mm -hmm. Assuming we're okay. balanced diet and all that. Exactly. Especially enough fiber foods with fiber. Okay. That's really the key. That is the key. And that's the big takeaway from this. So for example, if somebody's saying that their supplement is better because they added butyrate, well, that's okay. However, you don't have to add butyrate. So probiotics are helpful for a lot of people to maintain a healthy gut microbiome, as we call it. Right. But if we're eating enough ferment, for example, fermented foods, some prebiotics have the enough fiber. Sometimes fiber supplements can be helpful. So all those have in common are good sources of fiber that the bacteria can digest, and then they're going to make their own butyrate. Mm. Now, so I have, a, I have a, a question for you. You know that uh, I'm a, a great uh, skeptic on uh, uh, supplements that are advertised all over the place and to me, they look like just a money grab for things that if you have a, a, a decent diet, uh, uh, you don't need uh, to, to supplement it with, in this case, uh, butyrate, which is naturally made. Has there been any studies shown about how many people, uh, particularly in developed countries, are butyrate uh, deficient? Or is this just something that somebody... No. It sounds like something somebody hung their hand on and said, well, this butyrate is good for this. So now I'm going to make a product that has butyrate and That's imply, right. and imply that if you take this product, it's going to do something special for you when you're getting enough of it yes. anyway. Okay. Correct. That's I, I, I'm with you on this one. I think I fall between the two of you. You're a big, are you're a big skeptic of most supplements and John, you're a fan of most supplements. <laughs> I'm definitely in between. There is a lot more data than people realize. There's definitely more data than doctors realize. But mm -hmm. I think in this case, it's exactly what you just said. 
when we have, and, and we'll talk, we should, we should talk about the foods that people can eat uh, that have that type of fiber that's going to promote the internal production of butyrate so that you don't have to change or upgrade or spend more on, a, for, for example, a probiotic that has butyrate added to it. Okay. Okay. That's okay. Good. Yeah. And then we can also talk about things that disturb the gut, which are, in fact, we can talk about it. Let's talk about it reverse order. Let's touch on things that can disturb the gut microbiome. Okay. And then those little bacteria are going to have trouble making that butyrate. And then it gets into a little vicious cycle where they don't have the nutrients that they need in order to uh, thrive and do well. Good so, for point. example, if people are on if people are on antibiotics for a long time, that's a very good scenario in which to use a prebiotic and or probiotic. They're not eating the right foods. Maybe they're not able to get the right foods. We have a lot of health disparity and economic disparity in our country. And there are entire neighborhoods that don't have a market with fruit and vegetables. You may have to have a car to go to another neighborhood to, to be able to get something that doesn't come in a baggie or a package. Yeah. So lack of access to eating the right foods or, or poor choices, that does happen for sure. Also illnesses that affect the sugar balance in the body. Diabetes, of course, is the main one. And that we know that diabetes and diabetics have a disrupted gut microbiome. We also know that when you help the microbiome in the gut, you improve insulin sensitivity. And that is a big selling point of adding butyrate as a supplement because it's been shown specifically to improve insulin sensitivity. And that's really crucial in today's world. We have an overabundance of sugar in our world and our life and our foods. And so when we are able to improve insulin sensitivity, everything gets better from a metabolic standpoint. Okay, but, but uh, if uh, people are eating the right foods, which you're about to get to, then uh, they're gonna be able to make enough butyrate even if they have diabetes or that's other right. things. Um, is that where we're going with that's this? That's right. Good. Yes, that's exactly right. A healthier gut is gonna have less colon cancer, People have less cardiovascular disease, less IBS, irritable bowel syndrome symptoms, which that kind of makes sense. If your bowel feels better, you will feel better. Your gut will feel better. Also brain protective and also better sleep. All of those are benefits of having the gut in, in good shape and the healthy microbiome. So is there really, even though uh, uh, butyrate is made in the body, um, there's really, I guess there's no test for it. You can't go to your doctor and say, give me a blood test for my butyrate. Tell me whether I'm low or high. Right. That's right. I am not aware of what that would be. It definitely wouldn't be a blood test because it's, this is, we're talking about in the gut. Ah. Mm. All right. It's not circulating through the body. It's being produced in the gut and used by the bacteria in the gut. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Now there's so proxy tests. There's proxy tests. Like, are you getting enough fruit and vegetables? There are some tests that are done. They're not standard yet, uh, but they're coming to be able to tell that people are getting enough antioxidants, right? That's the other that we know mm -hmm. are in uh, fruits and vegetables. But the key here with this discussion is fiber. Okay, fiber. what kind of fiber? Okay, so we want soluble fiber. And I'll give some examples. Fruits that can that we can eat include, looking at my list here, apples, pears, bananas, kiwi. So you think about those fruits and they've got a little more substance to them. Okay, what I've heard referred to as the fiber lattice. This is where eating the apple is better for you than throwing the apple into a juicer. Ah. Uh. Yeah. All right. We're, we are better off eating the apple from a variety of standpoints. But right now we're talking about the fiber. Okay. There's beans, some beans that have good fiber in them. Veggies. Okay. And some of those are going to be a lot of, there's a lot of root vegetables in this list. Broccoli, carrots, garlic, onions, potatoes, turnips. Okay. 
So these are, and there's the others, peas, and there's all the good ones. Okay, leafy greens are also going to help here. And then last but not least is some items that are full fat dairy. Now we've talked, I think we've talked about dairy before. Dairy is not necessarily my favorite thing for people to eat. However, it can be a source of fiber. So for example, Art, we've talked a lot about for vegetarian and vegan folks, they're getting a lot of protein from dairy. And so it's very important, first of all, if it's possible to eat dairy, for example, goat, that isn't, a lot of people are sensitive to cow dairy, so but there might be sheep or goat dairy products. But also it's very important from a sugar and insulin standpoint to full fat, to eat full fat versus non-fat. The non-fat means that it's just giving the sugars without the fat to slow down the insulin response to the sugar. So this is very important, but it's probably gonna be best to stick to uh, fruits and veggies uh, for that fiber. That's really where we wanna be. Yeah. Hmm. Well, it all comes down to what you've told us many times under many circumstances, and that is have a healthy, well-balanced diet. Yes. And your body will pretty much take care of itself. Yes. Still remains true. Yeah. And and butyrol, or pardon me, butyrate, um, it sounds like a really obscure little chemical uh, in your body. And it, it probably is better off letting your body take care of it than trying to put a supplement in there. Mm. Yes. Yeah, it's just probably not necessary to the point of the advertising and marketing. It's 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 interesting to learn about and talk about and hear about it, but when you look a little deep, a little deeper into the topic, you find that it's not necessary to pay extra for something that contains it. Yeah. When you have a good diet with fruits and veggies. Good. Dr. Liz, thank you so very much. You're welcome. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.